What's up carnivores, Zach here with American Smoke and today we're going to show y'all how to make some baby back ribs two different ways. We're going to do a comparison video between the 2-2-1 method and the no wrap baby back method. We're going to see what the difference is in texture, what the difference is in pull back on the bones and appearance and so y'all stick around because we're going to be doing that today. It's going to be a lot of fun and we're going to be trying a couple different seasonings as well. Let's go ahead and get these ribs seasoned and ready for the smoke. First order of business is to glove up. Guys, if y'all are not using gloves while you're making barbecue and you've seen people using them and you're curious about them, they're just called black nitrile gloves. And let me save you uh, some trouble. Do not get the four meal gloves. I will leave a link to the gloves that I'm using right now. It's up there on Amazon. So if you're a Prime member, you know, that's your go-to. Six meal lets you pull on it without tearing the gloves. They're much easier to put on. I just highly recommend that you do not get the four meal gloves. So basically, uh, we're gonna do the larger rack right here, uh, two, two, one, and the slightly smaller rack, we're gonna do completely unwrapped in the smoke, the entire cook, and we're gonna see what the difference is. This is gonna be a quick prep. We're just going to use a spray on olive oil as a binder because it's super easy and uh, really seems to work well. We're gonna be hitting these up with a little bit of the 16 mesh black pepper provides great texture and flavor onto the barbecue helps to grab more smoke because of the large grit i got this from lanes y'all can get some from lanes if you like there'll be links down below and then today we're going to be using the grill glitter pork rub seasoning on the 221 rack now this is from one of our friends a great member of the facebook community and a great member of the american smoke family this is a very herby low sodium rub which makes me think maybe i need to put the salt on first if you're looking for a low sodium rub uh, this is a great one for you it's only two percent but i like my sodium up closer to 10 to 15 percent so i am going to put a light coating of kosher salt onto this rack and then we're going to be finishing up with the uh, the grill glitter pork rub it's uh very herby very flavorful which is you know you have to be very flavorful if you're going low sodium you know they say there's a small transition like if you start going low sodium on your foods you just use more herbs things like that and that you get used to it pretty quick i have not quite made that transition but you know uh, it might be good for me in the future we're going to just flip this rack over and do the same thing on this side Got the olive oil down. We're gonna hit it up with the black pepper. So very similar methods for these ribs. This isn't a competition for taste in this video. This is a competition for texture and uh, not necessarily a competition really. It's, it's more than anything, it's just a comparison video. Some people like, you know, super pull off the bone, just wiggle the bones and they come out. Some people like uh, a little tougher rib and some people are more about that competition style where you get a slight amount of tug but then it pulls right off the bone. The seasoning on this rack of rib is something I'm pretty excited about. This is called Swamp Venom from the Dizzy Pig Company. It's described as a tasty punch in the mouth. Cajun, Southwest flavor, influence, spicy heat level. So we're gonna have a very flavorful but mild rack and then we're gonna have a little heat on this rack. Swamp Venom is, we're looking at 6% on the sodium. So both of these are lower sodium. They, look, they use a lot more herbs and uh, spices things like that to compensate for the flavor that you don't get from the salt pat that on we're going to flip it over get the front side this one's a little bit wet we're just going to pat it with a paper towel we'll get some of that moisture off of there we're going to spray it down with the old oil and y'all can tell me you know is there a reason y'all don't like olive oil you prefer mustard or mayonnaise or you know hot sauce or whatever but i have not really found a great reason to smear mustard all over unless you're just in the mood for mustard olive oil spray is just so easy and it seems to work really well okay so those look great uh, now all we've got to do is get them over into the pit boss and get them cooking we're running our pit boss at 230 degrees today which you know if you've got a pit that goes to 225 typically if you're doing a 321 or 221 uh, method that's going to be uh, 225. 
So we've got these ribs all seasoned up and ready to go into the smoker. Uh, we're gonna be cooking these in the pit boss today at 225 degrees. Typically, if you're doing like a 3-2-1 method or a 2-2-1 method, which is, in my opinion, better for baby backs, uh, you're gonna be cooking at 225. With the pit boss, the way that the uh, control panel works, it stops at 220 or 230, so I'm gonna go at 230 just to make sure I don't go any lower on the heat than 225, which is considered low and slow. And so we're going to be uh, getting these into the pit boss and I'm burning some, what am I burning? I am burning the Bear Mountain Bourbon Barbecue Pellets in my chamber today. And in my smoke tube, I am burning a combination of the charcoal pellets and some of the bourbon barrel barbecue pellets. It's supposed to be a real mild blend. So I'm going to throw a little bit of that charcoal in there to kind of get a little extra smoke flavor on these ribs. Let's get them into the pit. All right, so those are looking great in there. We're gonna close it down, and in two hours, we're gonna be wrapping up the bigger wrap in aluminum foil, and then we're gonna just be leaving the other rack in the smoke. So we'll see y'all in about two hours. I'll be spritzing these about every 30, 45 minutes with apple cider vinegar and water, about a half and half mix. Okay, so we are at the two hour mark uh, and we're gonna go ahead and get these out and get them into some foil now. The color that these have taken on is phenomenal, man. Beautiful, beautiful ribs. We're gonna leave our no wrap baby backs in there. Just let them rock. Okay, so you can see we've got great color on these. And so what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna slide these forward just a little bit. And what you typically do with any sort of foil wrapped ribs is you're gonna put down a few pats of butter and a little bit of brown sugar. Some people do honey, I say honey for the money, but I don't really wanna disturb the flavor on these too much. So what I'm gonna do is just a real light little bit of brown sugar and just a little bit of butter to help them stay nice and moist inside the foil. And that's all gonna sort of melt in as these continue to cook. And then all we do is place these <clears throat> meat side down into the sugar and butter. And we're just gonna wrap them up like this, come over the top, and then we're just gonna close that up. We are gonna put these back into the smoke meat side down. Now, if you want, you can put butter and sugar on the top side, but I've never really seen a huge benefit to that. Usually what I've noticed is it creates a, just a, a huge pool in the bottom, and I don't really care anything about that. And then we're gonna double wrap it just in case our bones decide to cut a hole into our foil. Then we're just gonna squeeze it nice and tight, try to get any air out of there, because the benefit that the foil provides is we're gonna be steaming these a little bit. It's gonna soften our bark, but we're gonna regain our bark whenever we pull them out for that last hour. So two hours in the smoke, two hours in the foil, one hour back in the smoke to set some sort of a sauce on there if you wanna set a sauce, or you can just reset your bark and add sauce as you're eating them, which sometimes I prefer. So let's go ahead and get these back into the smoker. Let's have a look at that no wrap rack of baby bags. So just excellent color on this rack. I just love what that 16 mesh black pepper does for the texture. These are gonna be exceptionally good. See y'all in two hours. All right, so we just took our full ribs out and getting them ready to go back in. And I just wanna check out the temp on these no wraps. So they're pretty much ready. Yeah, 202, 203. So those are ready to rock and roll. We're gonna get them out, get them onto some foil and just let them rest. Okay, so these are our no wrap swamp denim ribs. They look fantastic. I mean, just so ethically good. I love the no wrap. I don't mind a super tender rib, which is what we're gonna get with this other set, but I am a big fan of the no wrap. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna sort of make a little boat 
not I don't want to completely close it up I want to leave it a little bit of room to breathe that way we don't steam that bark off of them we just keep them warm so I've got some little ventilation coming right here and just let that chill meanwhile we're gonna see what happens with these get them back into the smoker for long enough to set that bark the 221 typically is considered two hours in the smoke two hours in the foil and then what you have is an hour of either set the sauce or just you know until they get to the texture that you're looking for so these are going to be super tender super tender you can see we got a lot more pullback on the bones probably going to have trouble picking them up without them falling apart but uh wow wow's uh, check that out all i'm going to be doing is getting these into the smoker just to kind of reset that sauce just a little bit reset that bark and then they're coming right out so these got uh done really close to the same time these are going to be hard to pick up without them falling apart let's get these oh my gosh it happened <laughs> so like i said if you want really tender ribs uh if you want really super tender ribs if that's what you like wiggle the bone out that kind of thing then what you need to do is wrap it in foil and then reset the bark so we're going to get these back over to the smoker and set that bark real quick I think I forgot about you. <laughs> all right, so all we're gonna do is just leave them in there for maybe 15 or 20 minutes until they get a little uh, barky on the top and then they'll be ready. All right, so you can see that with about 20 minutes in the, back in the smoker, we have reset our bark. So for those of you that say that full ruins your bark, all you gotta do is just get it back into the smoker for a little while just to kind of pull some of that moisture out and reset it. Let's get these on the cutting board. All right, so I don't know what y'all think, but those are really good. The no wrap rack. So these are our swamp venom ribs. We end is messing with me, y'all. Messing with me. So I'm really pleased with the color that the grill glitter ribs took on you can see uh the bone just uh you know if you want super tender ribs you know uh wrapping in full is the way to go you can just take those out it's not an issue at all you know we took that membrane out so not a lot of resistance on the back side anyway really really pretty pork ribs really beautiful color and like i said just uh you know pull apart look at that smoke ring now onto this no wrap baby backs, great color, much darker. I mean, that's just beautiful. You can see these are also trying to pull apart a little bit. Can't quite twist the rib out. You can, but I'm not going to. Let's get into the taste. Let's see if we can get a whole rib out of this rack without it falling apart. I don't know that we will be able to, I'm gonna be honest with you even with a nice sharp knife. All right, we're gonna to have to do it like this. Nice slow cuts. See if we can get out of here with the bone in. So just a really pretty rib. Like I said, falling apart. That's what you get when you wrap in foil. Wow, so these are falling apart as well, apparently. <laughs> Four hours at 225 degrees for these baby backs. Swamp venom. Really good. Really good. Oh my gosh. Mmm. Man, that is good. I like that swamp venom. You can see we got a lot of smoke penetration. Always good to have that smoke tube going. So the main difference in these two is that the full wrap 221 baby backs are extremely tender extremely 
extremely tender. I mean, pulling apart like a brisket. Let's check out the flavor on these grill glitter ribs. That's ah, so good. Just a spectacular rib. I don't even have any sauce out here. Y'all go to grillglitter.com, check it out. Come over to American Smoke on Facebook and share some pictures with us. The Swamp Venom is completely different. It's very spicy. It's got that Cajun Western spicy flavor profile. Love the texture. I love the texture on those no wrap baby bags. So much different than the grill glitter. I would say equally good. So good. The only difference is, is since I put that brown sugar and butter on the grill glitter ribs, it's uh, got a little bit of a sweet profile, whereas this mainly is just uh, peppery and a little bit spicy. So good. The fat completely rendered in these ribs. It's like a liquid. Just excellent, excellent, excellent ribs. So good. I can't quit eating them. Wow. In case you ever wondered, what's the deal with the 221? What's the deal with the no wrap? Well, now you know. You know, you're going to cook a little bit faster with the no wrap. You're going to get a little bit more tender, pull the bone out really easily result with the 221. If you want them even prettier, set some sauce. And that last little bit, uh, make sure to check your temp, you know, get you a meat probe, check your temp. These all were at around 203 to 207. Maybe got this a little bit hot. Ain't nobody going to complain about them. I can promise you that much. Thank y'all so much for watching. Come over to American Smoke Carnivores on Facebook. I'll see y'all in there. Smoke on, and I'll see y'all in the next video.